From a compilation of articles by Rabbi Mikhail ben Pesach Portnar. The structure of the man. And Elohim said, Let us make Adam in our image and as our likeness. And Elohim said, Let us make Adam. Please refer to the written materials for the Hebrew text. The traditional translation would be, let us make mankind. But this is not correct. Because the Torah explicitly says, let us make Adam as the first human. The general and the particular are connected here. On the one hand, Adam as an individual, as the first human, who was the first? Who looked for and found the connection with the Creator? On the other hand, Adam as a human being in general. The word Adam means human being. Elohim calls him by his personal name and doesn't consider him as a being that belongs to the human species. It is also written, and Elohim created a woman. But this is totally different than creating him because he calls him by his name. Everything is in him. Don't think I'm basing this on Zohar. I'm not basing on anything. It doesn't matter how I interpret it or where I have read or heard this. We are only looking at the text, just like the authors of the Zohar did. They did it in the same way, and I try to do the same by looking at the text and explaining what comes to my mind. This is why we can analyze it ourselves. We try to copy their way of working, and it will enrich us immensely. It's all about this. We're going back to the text. Let us make Adam. This means somewhere in Asiya, because making is already giving form to something or someone. In our image. In our image or with our image, it can also be through. So, K is as demut, is likeness. So, looks like us. Who will look like us? Actually, this can't be translated into English, but this is what it says. Why is the letter Beit not used like in Tzalmenu? Why is it why is it Dmotenu? He said, in our image. Why doesn't he also say, in our likeness? Why is the letter Kaf used instead of Beit? This is a point of attention. I'm not saying I will give an answer, but this has to be pointed out. I've searched everywhere, but I haven't found why it is different. So literally, it would be in our image as our likeness. I don't know why it's like this, but it doesn't matter. We have found this, and one day we'll come to the surface, and the answer will be given to us. It's very high. It's the core of everything what we will learn now about Adam. Let us make Adam, and not man or mankind. Where do you see mankind in the text? If you look carefully, you won't find it in the text. And they will rule. Clear? It's a very weird construction because indeed he says, let us make Adam. And then it says, and they will rule. Look, we have come across something great now. We have found unity in Adam. So let us make Adam, and then we will see the unity. Look carefully. This is very important. From the third word, from the end of the line, it says, and they will rule. So, let us make Adam. 
the human being in its whole. Adam, who has also Chava, Eva, in itself. How do we know this? Well, the numerical value of Adam is 45. Aleph is 1, Dalet is 4, and Mem is 40. The total is 45. And we know that Ma, Parasuf Ma, is also 45. Now, please refer to the drawing in the written materials. Drawing 40-4-1. Adam was the first person who had all the complete powers in himself. Adam had, Adam had all the potential powers in himself, the way a person should be in his state of completion. That is Adam. And he is the carrier of all the souls in himself. Because at first, a person had everything in himself. But what happened afterwards? We'll have a close look at it together. I will highlight the filling in red. The first component of the filling, of the table, the entire filling has also four. The filling refers to the milui. The is just like the of, four letter name, only filled with the letter, only filled in the letter he is just like the letter he with aleph. The filling of the letter He is with Aleph, etc. In other words, we can say as follows, just like the construction of a partsuf, we have Yud and He above the Parsa, and Vav and the second He beneath the Parsa. Every partsuf has this construction. Clear? Yud is Chochmah. And the first hay is Bina. These two are always above in the higher part of the partsuf. This represents the higher world or the higher part in a person. This is what pulls us above to the divine. Hey, Yud, is the divine element in us, the higher world. This is the reason why a person has a desire for the higher in all kinds of ways. The hey yud in us, which corresponds with the hey yud of the zea, zeranpin, in us, and malchut, and all kinds of philosophies. It doesn't matter. Everything that is elevated is influenced by hey yud. And vav hey is the lower world. Yes? So you have a higher world, and build a parsa, the lower world. Both are necessary. So this is the general construction. Please refer to the written materials for the drawing of the general construction. We are now going to look at the construction of the Zahir Anpin, which is Adam, and afterwards to all the people. Later on it will be when the lower corresponds, because everything has to be in correspondence above and below. So, Adam corresponds with Zea. Clear? Adam is not Zea. Adam is a product of Zea. Zerampin and Malchut have created the human being. So, the root of the human being is Zerampin and Malchut. Everything will be clear in a bit. Therefore, we can see that Adam has 45, just like the filling of the four-letter name, Avaya, of Zairampin. The Zairampin is filled with 45, and the human being is filled with 45. Now we're going to divide the partsuf of Zea in two. We can then see in the picture above, that the general Yud is filled with Vav and Dalit. 
This is the way to know which powers are hidden in certain elements of the creation. He is filled with Aleph, and beneath the Parsa we have the Vav, which is filled with Aleph. Beneath we have again He, which is filled with Aleph, above the Parsa and below the Parsa. At right we have the Bear, four letter name, and the left the Filled, four letter name, Avaya. Now, we're going to look at the partner of Adam. So at first Adam was created, we only saw Adam, and the same verse, the Creator says, and they will rule. What's the meaning of this? The human being, Adam is created in the same essence. It is written, and they will rule, in plural. Now we're going to look at the name of his partner, Eva, or Chava, as we call her. Chava is spelled as follows. Chet, Vav, Hey. This is the name of his wife, and the first mother of all mothers. Now look carefully to the lower part of the Ze'ah, the Vav and He. Vav is filled with Aleph. So, Vav, Aleph, Vav makes a total of 13. And the last is He, Aleph, which is 6, and gives us a total of 19. And that is Chet, Vav, He, Chava. So, with regard to powers, the lower part of Adam, the first human, inside him, there is Chava. So, the lower part of the part suf of Ze'ah and Adam. Adam is constructed in the same way as Ze'ah. Clear? That's why he has man and woman inside of him. But everything is in total 45. And that is Adam. What did we, what did we solve with this? We solved the following questions that occurred to us. Let us make Adam in singular. It doesn't say a man or a woman. It says Adam. And a bit further in the same sentence it's written, and they will rule. We see that Adam holds in him Adam, the human being, and the real name, Adam. The human being, regardless of the sex, consists of two parts. Of course, with regard to the general. And now we're going to look at the general and particular separately. With regard to the general, we have, of course, Adam and Chava, a real man and woman, also the first human, the first man and woman who were created. At first, Adam was created, and from his lower part, from his rib, Hava was created. We can see from where Hava was created, from the lower part of him, the lower part of the partsuf of Adam. Do you see it? From the lower part, Hava was taken out. And the taking out of Hava from Adam, Adam is the entire partsuf, 45, yes? Hava is included in Adam as his lower part. Taking out Chava also means giving her an complete, giving her a complete partsuf. Can everybody see it? The lower part of her is disconnected from Zairan Pin. Then Zea gets his own filling. She is inside of him, and therefore we say the woman is also inside of a man. Absolutely. He disconnected her from him. How? He also made from her a partsuf of Adam. Also Chava has the partsuf of Adam. In general, she is created as the lower part of him, but afterwards she was separated. Can you see now why they are created as one? The higher part of Adam, it's difficult to put it into words, is his own essence and his feminine part is below his parsa. The higher part of a person is masculine. It's the same for every person. And the lower part is feminine, also for every person. So a woman is also Adam. In particular, every woman is also Adam. 
she has the same construction like Adam. She also has a higher part that is masculine, which is Yudhe of the bear four letter name. Or Yud with the Vav and He with the Av of the higher part. This is the masculine part. So again, Yud and He with the Alef. Now, look at above the part, the part Suf of Adam. It has a numeric value of 26. This is the same for every person, regardless of the sex. The filled Yud is 20. And He is 6. Together it's 26. The number 26 is also interwoven in the name of Aya, the four that are named. What did we solve with this? In our image, this is what we have solved, and that is 26 above the parsa. So every person has inside of himself, above his parsa, the image of God. Which image? Which is our image? The one above the parsa. I absolutely didn't know what I would be explaining this tonight. I had never put this into words. Thanks to you and the Creator, I was able to do it. So look, we have the number 26 above the Parsa. And with this, we can see that the image of a person is above the Parsa till the middle. A person, and also the image of God, only exist in the higher part, and not below the middle. Therefore, the biggest sin was to pull the light or the image of God down, which was the case with the fall of Adam. What did he do? He pulled the image of God down, while it was forbidden for him to do that. The Creator told him that due to that, he couldn't have resemblance to him, because below the middle is the gematria of Chava, the number 19. So, what do you need to do? The lower part of his part suf, from the middle to below, is feminine, is chava. What does a person have to do? He has to pull his feminine side up. Also, spiritually, pull his feminine side up to the image of God, to the higher part, and have intercourse there. Clear? And afterwards, she can go down to her own place. So, we can see in the above part of Adam that it is the image of God with Gematria 26, which is the four-letter name on its own. And in his lower part, you have the Gematria 19. So, the Creator said to Adam, If you want to have intercourse with Chava, firstly bring her up, which means in yourself. But also bring up Chava in general. At first, you have to bring up. You have to bring Chava up in yourself in particular. Bring her up before making Zivug with her. At first, you have to pull up your own Chava, your own left line. Only then, you can have, in a clear and kosher way, intercourse with her. Who was given to you by the Creator? But what did Adam do? He went to his wife, he went down, he lowered the powers in himself. He, his own image of God by doing, by going down to his own feminine element and did exactly the same thing in general. Clear? Therefore, we can see that the snake came to Chava. Where is the snake? It's under the partsuf. The snake is under Chava. The entire partsuf is the four-letter name, or all the letters of the alphabet from Aleph till Tav. Gradually, we're going to see more and more connections of what is said in the Torah. Is it now clear what the sin of Adam is? He pulled everything down and pulled it all the way down to the snake. But who was the instigator? It was the snake, because at first, it comes to Chava. It's just like the Sidra Achra. At first it comes 
to the letter Tav. And it tries to use the Tav. In the same way, the snake seduced Chava. And what did Chava do? She brought the desire of the snake in herself, took it over, and afterwards went to seduce Adam, as it were, in his higher part. And Adam fell down from yud of his image of God, to which he was made. Therefore, try to work. This is very important, what we have put into words. Work on it. You will get a lot of answers about this sin, etc. We will learn everything afterwards. Instead of pulling her up, then the distance between Hawaii and the snake would be enlarged. Clear? Imagine that he brings up his Hava to above his Parsa. Then there remains a great distance between them and the snake. The snake can never come in the upper part of the Partsuf, in the holy part, never. But what does the snake do? It seduces a person so the light of the Tav, of the holy letters, which is the terminal, is pulled down to the snake. It's very important to work on this matter. It will give you in different respects a great understanding and power if you step by step take this in yourself. I don't expect I would be saying this today. Now look what we have solved with this sentence. The Creator says, and Elakim said, let us make Adam. Making a partsuf, a, re- a real construction that exists out of an above and a lower part. This is making. Also, in our image, let us make Adam in the singular. We have learned one thing, why it's singular. So, we have received our answer. Why is Adam in singular? Because he had the second part in him. So, every person has two parts. A woman is also Adam. Is it clear why? Her, above, or higher part, is masculine. Above means right, and below means left. So a woman is also a dumb, but her general feature is feminine. And in particular, in every woman there is a dumb. Clear? So the Creator says, let us, which Creator does this work? Which Creator does this say? Elakim says this. It's also very important to know that Elakim says this because it hasn't been unfolded yet. Also, the name hasn't been unfolded yet. On the other hand, what I have explained has already been unfolded of what will happen. Clear? What we're still, but but we're still at the very beginning here. Why Elakim? It's in the bud. And therefore, Elakim is still used as strictness of the law. But in the name itself, when it will be unfolded, you will find mercifulness and the four-letter name. A question from a student. Can you compare it with Adam Kadmon? No. Of course, everything has the same image, but in Adam Kadmon, in the first world, we can't see neither feminine nor masculine. Adam Kadmon is also above the tabur and below the tabur. When we look at Adam Kadmon, we can see Yudhe till the tabur. In the first world, we have the same construction till the tabur. So we have Yudhe from above to below the tabur of the name of Ayah, the four-letter name. This is, as it were, the masculine part. There's light in this part. But below the parsa, light wasn't allowed to enter. Also not in Adam Kadmon. Chokhmah isn't allowed to go down even not before the creation of the human being. Because the part below the parsa of Adam Kadmon holds holds the future. But it absolutely doesn't have a feminine element yet. But in the future, there will be a feminine element. Is that clear? Also, there you will have a Zerambin and Malchut. Look, what we're learning now. They learned 20 years in Bnei Baruch, but never hear anything about this. Why not? They don't ask for it. 
This is a completely different study. Is it clear what we have just learned? They only learn about the higher and lower there, but we also learn about the letters and names of the Creator, and also about the Partsuf, and this is what gives flavor. Higher and lower is also an element, but it's not enough. Once again, what do we learn? Let us make Adam in singular. We have solved that because he has both in himself, in our image, and now we know why there is a second condition. Why do you think? In our image and as our likeness. Why both? Miriam says that at first there was one part suf, and then two parts of him. The question is why it says, let us make one Adam. And then it says, in our image and as our likeness. Why two? Miriam says that later there will be two parts of him. Tassos says, because Adam exists out of two, above and below. Because it exists out of two, the higher world and the lower world. Very good. It's what Miriam said, but what Tassa said is still in the bud. Because in our image, it refers to the higher part of the partsuf. It refers to Yudhe, of the name of the Creator, and as our likeness, refers to Vavhe, the lower part of the partsuf. My friends, I think it's the first time that this is revealed to the world in this way. It's not mine. I didn't know I would be talking about this. It's given in our time. Look how much not Jewish literature there is about this, and that it's terrible. But it had to be like this. One couldn't understand nor experience this. It was not time yet. I absolutely have respect for the Christian explanation, but it's different. They try to understand it with their head. Is it clear what is written here? Those two conditions, in our image and as our likeness, this is completely different than image and likeness. There is much to talk about this, but you have to do the rest of the work now and think it over. I can't do it for you. Also, my teacher did not do it for me. He only gave indications, and I had to do the rest. You have to ask your guide. You have to comprehend it, not me. I have indicated it. And they will rule. Those two in a person, only then they can rule. Now, look carefully. They will rule. What does this show us? It's clear that it's plural, yes, because later it will be two parts of him. But both are in Adam now. Then they will rule over everything. What does this mean? When a person gets the image of God, then he will have both in him. But when a person doesn't attract himself to the image of God, but attracts the animal in him, then the animals will rule over a person. Do you hear what I'm saying? When a person doesn't build up the entire part suf in him, then he can rule over everything that lives. Okay, step by step, are you learning, are, are you hearing this? So when a person builds up his higher and lower part, this doesn't mean that he pulls the higher down, but the other way around. Then he rules over the animals. So first Adam, and then every person that comes after Adam, because we all have the image of Adam, only cut up into pieces. But it doesn't matter. We all have the same image of Adam. Why? Nothing exists in general that doesn't exist in the particular. The general in the race of humans is Adam. And the particular is every soul that comes to this earth embedded in a body. It doesn't matter which body. It does matter, but I mean because because everybody is given to a person, remember, it's very well in accordance to his soul. You can look at someone and think that he or she has a beautiful body, but you don't know much which corrections that person has to do. It seems beautiful to you that there can be a cold person inside while the best body is given to you. The best body is given to you that suits you and your incarnation so you're able to do deep corrections that fit your soul very well. Clear? So when a person is born with a physical handicap or other disabilities, a mongol for example, it doesn't matter what, it means that it's the best thing for his correction in this incarnation. 
Can you see how careful we have to be with every person? That we don't treat them all one and the same. Like the Spartans who killed the weak children when they saw they couldn't become heroes. Back then they saw it like this because they had to fight and survive. So they made a selection. Did it work? They only got misery in return, just like the Germans who also wanted to make a selection. Also in our time, they do the same, but in a more subtle, smooth, and inhuman way. Absolutely inhuman way, because we don't know what happens behind the scenes. They want to make sure that only obedient civilians are born, so they will only be positive like robots. But we also need the others. We also need villains. This is also good. So when someone is born, then it's necessary. Clear? So the word, and they will rule, we have to gradually take this in, because the information I receive is much faster than the transfer to earth. But I have to do it. It's also my task to slow it down. What we learn here, that a person can rule over everything that lives and over everything that's on earth, in all its four natures. Pay attention, only when he has both in himself, in our image and as our likeness. So when he has the masculine and feminine himself and also builds it up, not only masculine, above, or only feminine, then you're like the Spartans or nations and you can never be happy or communists clear they can never be happy they can never come to their fulfillment therefore all the rich people got ruined therefore babylon fell apart and all the others also the roman empire fell apart and eventually humankind will accept his both elements his masculine part yud hey and his feminine part vav hey both are elements of the name avaya the four that are named. So both form a four that are named, masculine and feminine. So you can see that they form one in the four that are named. Work on yourself, then a person will be able to rule. Therefore it is said, Zoar also mentions this, that when Daniel was in Babylon, he was accused by the ministers. They were jealous of him. And he was accused, he was a courtier, of course, to the king liked him. Of course, the king liked him, but they put forward arguments to make him bow, but he didn't bow to the law. They saw that he was praying to the true creator, so they threw him in a pit with lions, and in the morning they saw, it's a very special prophecy, we're going to talk about it later. They saw that the hungry lions were calm and hadn't attacked him, etc. He had the image of God in him, he had both in himself, the higher part of the partsuf and the lower part of the partsuf. Therefore, the lions could smell the image of God in him. Later on, we will learn that the Creator said, And I will give awe to all the animals, to everyone who lives for Adam, for the human being. And they, the animals, initially felt awe for the human being. An animal can never attack a person when a person has the image of God in himself. They avoid the human being. Panthers, large animals, will never do such a thing. They avoid the human. A few years ago, in the Netherlands, an elephant had attacked and killed a caretaker. The elephant had sensed that something was not right with him and had attacked him. Before he had never attacked, he was being fed. But he felt that this person had done something, not personally, God forbid, but something that had lowered him. Otherwise, an animal would never attack someone. This means, and they will rule. The second part of the lesson. The second part of the lesson. During the break, everyone who, has, who was present, including my wife, was impressed by what was revealed to us. But also for me, it was a revelation. They were persistent, pushy, of course, because it's so great, the experience of it. More questions were asked, more and more, a lot of questions, and then I said it directly. Not that I told it, but it was told to me. Now, try to release yourself from what you've heard. 
You want to be the ruler of the light, what you have received. You want to cling to it, but it doesn't work this way. Even not for the greatest holiness, nor for the authors of Zohar. What I am now telling you also comes from the Zohar. You have to let it go even after the greatest spiritual experience. Don't have fun afterwards. We have learned this. Do you remember? Having fun afterwards before and now, you have to always keep this in mind. Also, here you need to let go what you have learned. This way you show the higher that it's not yours as it were. But you give it back to the Creator, and then in accordance with the qualities, everything will be. Because nothing goes away in the spiritual. So why should we then hold on to it? Once you have experienced it, then it will be carved inside of you. You don't have to be afraid to lose it. The point is not to remember it. It has to live inside of you. Okay? It has now been carved inside of you and it can't be de detached anymore. Then, other questions come to the surface that go deeper and deeper. Just like a hundred meter sprinter does after ten seconds, maybe even less. What do they do? At first, a great concentration, but immediately after the finish, they loosen their legs and arms. You have to do the same in your inner. So after a great effort, you have to shake off everything you have received. This is a great instrument that is given to us from above. Learn this very well. Not after the lesson or when you go home, but immediately. So one minute after the lesson, you have to let it go and don't think about anything. This heals. Remember this very well. So now, I'm going to explain, explain it Kabbalistically. What do you have to do? So one minute ago, you were in the left line. You received a great portion of Chokmah, and that Chokmah outweighs you. You have learned that experiencing the real Chokmah needs to be constructive. Of course, it gave us a kick, but without Hasidim, it won't last. Of course, it will always stay because it was inside of you, but at that moment, you have to immediately go right. This means that at that moment, when you're talking about the weather, this is better than talking about Torah, because at that moment you release yourself. This means that your inner person moves to the right, and then Hasidim comes there. You have, as it were, weakened your left line with Hasidim, and this way, as we have explained yesterday, Hasidim forms a shell where Chokmah goes up and not down. When you experience it as going down, then this is not okay. Only when you take a break in your concentration, then the Hasidim and Chokmah you have received to go up and go down together. Only then it goes to the lower part of your partsuf. Clear? Then it goes below the parsa in a good way, below your middle. Otherwise, you would Give this great information which I have given you now to the Sitra Akhra, to the unclean power. Because the information I have given you can also be used for the Sitra Akhra, God forbid. And she will cheer for you immensely. She will make use of it. So you can't let this happen. Not very long ago, I was talking to someone and he was asking all kinds of questions. And at first I answered his questions. He was Christian, and he wanted to know about Yeshua. I gave him an answer, and then he wanted to know more about the Merkava, the divine carrier, etc. And then I said no to him. At first I gave him something for the kick, but not more. Otherwise I would be tempting him. Now he's starting to slowly understand this. Do you understand how this mechanism works? When someone thinks I'm being unfriendly, I don't mind this then that person won't return. Yes, I don't attract anyone, but when a person is attracted by its own, then this is good. Clear? So when it comes in your right side, then let it go completely. And after the lesson, also, when you're studying at home, then in one second you have to be able to, th to not think of anything. 
also. When it pushes, you have to conquer it because you're constantly occupied with these things. You have to conquer this, absolutely. How can that be? It's a divine thing. They're, it are divine impulses. No, because you have to know for sure that it comes from the Sidracha. So, now, after the lesson, know that it comes from Sidracha, from the unclean power. She saw that you were impressed by your higher part, and she will try to seduce you to bring it to her. Therefore, after the lesson, when you're trying to sleep, but are not able to, because you're excited, then the Sitracha will make use of your excitement. Look what we're learning. I have never been able to put this into words. You have to conquer this even though you don't understand it, because you think it's an impulse. The divine light which you receive, but it's the Sitra Acha that wants you to believe that. So after the lesson, absolutely don't think of anything. When it comes to you, don't respond. Don't pay attention to it. But also don't push it away because then you would be doing weird things. Just like Chava, who wasn't allowed to respond on the itching below. The itching in her was the snake. Which snake was there? About which snake does the Torah speak of? It was the itching below her, also spiritually. But because of the snake, of course, below her, below the spiritual, below the holiness, there is a territory of the snake. And of course, she gets this from the Sitra Achra. So we had come to, and they will rule. And after a few words, an overview will be given with whom he has to rule. Not over someone, it doesn't say rule over the animals, not over someone. Of course, it's translated beautifully into English, but this is not what it says. In all, in all the other, in all the others, or with all the others that are listed here, what does this mean? Everything that is listed here was created for the human being. Everything that is listed here, that's mentioned here, a person has to rule with cattle and with all kinds of other things. And now, I need your absolute concentration again. Don't be emotional. The Kabbalah doesn't have anything to do with emotions. Only spiritual. Bring it back to your mind. But don't get emotional. The emotions will come, but not here. Don't get drawn by them. Absolutely not. When they come, they need to come. But let go of them. When they come up, God forbid, don't push them away. Just try not to pay attention to them. The spiritual work we're doing together here also stimulates our lower elements that are also listening. They're taking part. Do you understand? You feel warmth inside and all kinds of other things which you don't have to pay attention to. It's important that you don't pay attention to your emotions here. It comes, but don't, don't pay attention to it because it does not have anything to do with the spiritual. Try to remember this very well. It's good when emotions rise, but when you pay attention to them, which are now elevated because you have experienced the spiritual, then you're going to again. Who is going to, who's going to make use of them? Again, the Sitra Achra. So when it comes up, then it's great, but don't pay attention to it. What does it say next? We still have a few minutes left. So look, all those living creatures were created for Adam, and Adam came after that. And we have said that nothing disappears in the spiritual. Also, qua powers, Adam has everything what was before. Everything continues to exist. Adam has now everything in himself, what was created before. Nothing exists in the lower, because nothing exists later which hadn't existed before. Because before, there was a cause for that which comes later. Is that clear? All forms of nature that were before were actually the cause of the creation of the human being. Yes? The precursors of the human being. Actually, we can say that Adam is the result of all the others. 
also of the crawling animals, also of the lizards, the entire nature that preceded the human being. What does this mean? That the human being has everything in himself because they were before him. Therefore, everything can be found in a person. All forms that were a person has in himself. That is said about him. And they, so the human being, Adam, who exists out of two elements, will rule over all the elements in their partsuf. They will rule over everything that was created. Is this entering you? Everything that was created before, before it became Adam, was the cause that made the human being. So every shellfish, of course, in their root, in their core, in their quality, everything was already created. And now it is said that a person has to rule over all the elements, powers in himself, the power in him that is the shellfish, or mosquito, the elephant, the panther, etc., he has to rule over all the powers in himself. Okay? Therefore, every lion feels in a person a part of him, even more than only a lion. In a person, there's also the power which is connected to the root of that lion. Clear? So when a person uses all his powers from the both sides of his partsuf to the image of God, and also to the likeness of the Creator, when he has all the animals in himself, all the crawling creatures, all the natures, all plants, and then, of course, every animal separately, also here as manifestation of the root of a certain animal species, because they also have spiritual roots. They all have spiritual roots, even grass. So a person has everything in himself, and because of that, because he has all the roots of the natures in himself, he can rule over everything. All the branches all the manifestations of all forms of nature. Yes. Otherwise, we can't understand why the human being can rule. Now, we can also see why he came later, was unfolded later. Later also means a further development. Therefore, before the creation of the human being, we do not have free will, just like a complete wish is realized in Malchut. When we look at the spreading of the lights, the four phases of development of the light, the Kether gives to Chokmah. The Chokmah absolutely doesn't ask for it. He receives it blindly. Chokmah can be compared with lifeless nature during the spreading of light in the four phases of the development of the light. Clear? The Bina already has a certain form of movement. She offers, as it were, resistance. Bina is compared, qua powers, to the vegetable kingdom. Ze'ah, Ze'rampin, squaw powers to the animal kingdom, and the human being squaw powers to the Malchut. This was it for today. Also here we have a slogan of the day. The slogan of the day is, Do you want to be answered? Do you want to come to completion? Then you have to comply with the part, the qualities by which Adam was gifted during his creation. So in the image of the Creator, this means the higher part of the partsuf, that is Yudhe, masculine, and the lower part as the likeness of the Creator, that is Vavhe, the feminine part of a person. Together it makes in you the human being, with capital letters, who exists out of two, masculine and feminine. If you're a man or a woman, that's absolutely not important. Is that clear? Work on this lesson. Try to strive for those two and try to go deeper in this lesson. Again, try to work on this lesson, but with the eternal tip that I gave you. At first, you need to be fully concentrated on the spiritual. Then you need to let it go completely. Don't think of anything. This way, you make and create a great space in your kilim. From one extreme to the other, because Adam has created in this way. Because Adam was created in this way. He could see from one end of the world to the other end of the world. This means from complete concentration to being completely absorbed in the light of the Creator. The light of the Creator is a light for all of us.